history proves humans are a carnivorous species. In this video, we're going to go back in time to look at all the evidence that shows how we know this and why it matters. For the majority of known history, humans were living in the Ice Age. As the name suggests, the Ice Age was a time where most of the Earth was either completely covered or at least heavily impacted by ice and icy conditions. The top northern third of the Earth was covered in thick ice sheets. Here, you couldn't eat any plants because they were frozen over. Due to these brutal living conditions, most humans, like many animals, migrated south to two other major regions. The first major area was just below these ice sheets. Life here was also very difficult. The land, even if it wasn't fully covered in ice, was often frozen or waterlogged, making it almost impossible to grow crops or any plants. The second major region we migrated to was spread across and around the equator, primarily throughout Africa. But they couldn't grow crops or plants here either. For one, rainfall was very inconsistent. Anyone who has ever tried to grow their own crops knows what happens when you don't water them. The areas that did see some rainfall had another issue. Tropical soils, especially in rainforests, are often nutrient poor due to heavy rainfall washing nutrients away. This wasn't necessarily from a lack of rain, it was from too much rain over time in prior years. As a whole, the climate made growing crops very difficult. All of these regions where humans primarily lived she had one major problem. Growing or gathering plants for food was extremely difficult. This made them an unreliable and unimpactful source of energy. The only potential plants that we ever ate were those that could survive extreme cold, like fibrous roots or seasonal berries. But they were rare, low in energy, and only used as survival foods. These plants were definitely not ideal for multiple reasons. Due to the extreme climate, we did what was necessary for survival. We hunted. With the help of stone tools, humans managed to become very successful hunters. Large animals were often prized because they provided an abundance of meat and dietary fat. Surprisingly, large animals were also some of the easiest animals to hunt. An example was megafauna. When we would encounter megafauna, they didn't see us as a threat. To them, we were just some tiny harmless creatures. So harmless that they would let us walk right up to them, similar to how elephants are with us today. But these megafauna did not understand what the stone objects in our hands could do to them. Before they could react or realize the danger, it was already too late. They had been struck down and turned into our next meal. But other animals were much more cautious around us. For animals like buffalo, we had to hunt them very differently. They wouldn't let us get close, so we had to be strategic. In the example of buffaloes, what we would do is form strategic group patterns to herd the buffalo close to a cliff. Then once close, we would frighten them using fire and noise. These loud noises caused the buffalo to panic, and as a result, they would run towards the cliff. But the thing with buffalo is that they are herd animals. So when they're frightened with only one direction to go, as soon as one buffalo ran towards the cliff, the rest would follow, resulting in the buffalo falling off the cliff and leaving the hunters with an abundance of meat at the bottom. Many groups also turned to fishing as an efficient way to get energy. During the Ice Age, coastal humans developed clever strategies, like building simple stone tide traps. They'd stack rocks in a V or semicircle shape in shallow tidal zones. When the tide came in, fish would swim over the rocks and get caught. Then, as the tide went out, the water drained, leaving the fish stranded. This allowed humans to then gather the fish by hand, no tools, no chasing, just rocks, timing, and patience. These are just some of the examples of the intelligent strategies we use to become successful hunters. In fact, humans became such skilled and successful hunters, we were the top of the food chain, apex predators. This isn't a theory. This is fact. A major study conducted by researchers at Tel Aviv University in collaboration with Portugal's University of Minho concluded from 400 scientific papers across various scientific disciplines that humans were hyper-carnivorous apex predators for essentially all of our existence. To reach this conclusion, this study compared evidence across biology, including genetics, metabolism, physiology, and morphology, as well as archaeological evidence. But the biggest giveaway that proves humans were apex predators is our fossil records. Human fossils found from the Ice Age show we have extremely high nitrogen-15 ratings. Nitrogen is a naturally occurring element found in all living tissues, but it is significantly more concentrated in animal meat than it is in plant material. When an animal eats other animals, a specific form of nitrogen called nitrogen-15 accumulates in large amounts over time. The higher up the animal on the food chain, the more nitrogen-15 that it collects. By measuring nitrogen-15 levels in fossilized bones, we can determine how high the animal sat on the food chain. When we look at fossils from humans who lived during the Ice Age, the results show the highest nitrogen-15 levels on the planet. 
even exceeding those of top predators like lions or wolves. This shows that humans had access to whatever animal we liked. We were the ultimate apex predators. Because of this, we were able to easily meet our energy requirements. Because animal meat and its associated fat is very energy dense. During this time, not only do we know that humans were eating almost entirely meat, but we also know that they were very healthy in doing so. In Illinois, USA, near the Illinois River, lies one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. The site of Dixon Mounds. Over 1,000 human fossils have been uncovered at the site. What makes findings like this so valuable is that not only can we determine what these individuals ate, but also when they lived and how healthy they were. As mentioned earlier, the more meat a species consumes, the higher its nitrogen 15 levels. This is one of the most reliable indicators of diet and fossil record. To determine when someone lived, we generally rely on two key methods. Firstly, carbon dating. While alive, plants and animals absorb carbon from the environment. When they die, they stop and the radioactive carbon-14 slowly decays. So by comparing the remaining carbon-14 to the stable isotope carbon-12, which doesn't change over time, we can estimate how old the sample is, simply by looking at this ratio. We can also use stratigraphy, which is a fancy way of saying that deeper soil layers are generally older, so fossils found further down are usually from an earlier time. Fossils found with high nitrogen-15 levels, indicating a heavily meat-based diet, were found deeper in the soil and had lower carbon-14 levels, confirming they belonged to earlier populations who were on a primarily meat diet. In these fossils, we see excellent health. There are very few lesions and markings on the remains. This is important as lesions and markings indicate disease and infection, so we can determine these people were healthy individuals. On top of that, they had a strong facial structure with wide jaws and little to no dental crowding. Their teeth were also in great shape with minimal tooth decay and cavities. We were tall, men averaged five foot nine and women averaged five foot five. And this isn't an isolated case. At every archaeological site around the world, the same pattern shows up. When nitrogen 15 levels are high, and it is clear that the fossils indicate a heavily meat-based diet, measurable health metrics are consistently very good. For most of our history, humans lived in great health by eating a carnivorous diet. But 12,000 years ago, after living in the Ice Age for so long, with crazy, unpredictable weather patterns, the entire climate of the Earth suddenly changed. The Earth's temperature increased, and as a result, much of the Earth's ice began to melt. This made life much easier for humans. It was no longer freezing cold, so survival was much easier. Because of this, our population started to increase rapidly. The rise in population meant we needed more food to feed all of these new people. So, we started hunting more. But of course, there are only so many animals to hunt. If you hunt too many of them, their population decreases. As well as this, hunting comes with its own difficulties. For one, you have to expend a lot of energy in order to hunt. Hunting itself can also be quite dangerous. So, we had to find a better way to sustain this population growth regarding our food intake and overall energy requirements. Luckily, humans, at least some, are intelligent. During the Ice Age, in most regions, the ground was frozen solid, making it extremely difficult to cultivate or dig into. But because of the change in climate, this was no longer an issue. So we started putting up fences and domesticating livestock for their milk and meat. This was a significant breakthrough in human history, and it is now known as the agricultural revolution. But here's the thing. Animals can take years to grow to a sufficient size where they provide us with a substantial amount of meat. Back then, we didn't have all these grains and soy to fatten them up very quickly. With our population increasing rapidly, we had to come up with an even better way to feed everyone. So we decided to start growing our own crops. At this time, even though more plants were still available, they were still largely inedible on their own. This is because for one, they were very small and didn't provide us with much energy. As well as this, these plants were too toxic and therefore too bitter to eat in any significant amounts. So we were forced to put our minds to use. We realized that if we grew two plants side by side, and allowed them to cross-pollinate with each other, we could create new hybrid-style plants based on preferable traits. Think about it like this. All humans belong to the same species, but some individuals naturally possess traits that give them an advantage in survival and reproduction. For instance, certain people are more intelligent or physically larger than others. If our goal were to maximize these traits, we'd encourage the people with the highest intelligence and size to have children. Then, from their offspring, we'd select the smartest and largest to reproduce next. By repeating this process over generations, we'd eventually produce a group of humans far smarter and larger than ever before. This is exactly what we did with plants, 
we would grow and breed them for favourable traits. In fact, almost every modern plant is unrecognisable from its original wild form. For example, 12,000 years ago, wild potatoes were very small, bitter and incredibly toxic due to a super high glycocolloid content, which is a type of defence compound. Now, after thousands of years of the selective breeding process, Modern potatoes are much larger, they contain much less glycocolloids, and as a result, taste much better. Wild bananas were small, hard, and packed with large, inedible seeds. They were very starchy, bitter, and it wasn't something that you'd enjoy. Today's bananas, thanks to thousands of years of selective breeding, are massive, seedless, soft, sweet, and very easy to eat. We've essentially turned a tough wild fruit into a sugary snack. Broccoli as we know it didn't even exist 2,000 years ago. Through selective breeding, broccoli was developed from wild cabbage in Italy more than 2,000 years ago. In fact, the wild cabbage that broccoli came from, the original cabbage used to create broccoli, actually itself came from crossbreeding around 3,000 years ago. A lot of people have this idea that humans were these hunter-gatherers who would eat lots of vegetables and fruit along with our meat. But this is simply not true. Vegetables as we know them didn't exist, and fruits were nowhere near as sweet. Most were packed with seeds, and they were so small that they wouldn't have been appealing, much less appealing than today's modern fruit. As well as this, fruit was only available very seasonally, for about four to eight weeks per year, and in many places, not at all. The reason humans were carnivores for most of our existence was because essentially we had no choice. There were simply no plants that we could eat in sufficient quantities. They were simply all too toxic. Every single plant that humans eat nowadays has been heavily manipulated in some way through all of our agricultural practices. But what does this all mean? Why does it matter if we created all of these plants? Well, since we've started crossbreeding and consuming much more of these plants in our diet, it has had terrible consequences on human health. You remember that archaeological site that I talked about earlier? The site of Dixon Mounds. Well, they don't only have fossils from carnivorous humans there. They also have fossils that are much lower in nitrogen-15, indicating a plant-based diet. Their carbon-14 levels were higher, and they were found in more recent layers, so we know they lived later in history. At the site Dickinson Mounds, within just 250 years, the population had switched from a meat-based diet to a crop-based diet. Now during this time, the population had grown nearly tenfold. So the main theory for this dietary change is that they overhunted large animals, leaving them with no choice but to switch to this plant-based diet. Whatever the reason, the difference in health between these two groups is drastic. Like we discussed earlier, the carnivorous group, they were very healthy. But the people on the plant-based diet, well, it's the complete opposite. There was a sharp increase in lesions and markings on the fossils. This shows there was considerably more disease and infection. There were much higher rates of degenerative spine conditions. This group also had much smaller, weaker jaws, with more dental crowding, tooth decay, enamel defects. In fact, there was even tooth loss. The average height also dropped by three inches in both sexes. In just a few generations, this population at Dickinson Mounds went from robust and healthy healthy, to shorter, weaker, and visibly sick. And again, this isn't an isolated case. At every major archaeological site around the world, the same pattern shows up. When nitrogen-15 levels drop, mean the population switch from a meat-based diet to a plant-based diet, health declines across every measurable metric. While the people of Dickinson Mounds may have made this dietary switch relatively late. Many populations switched right after the Ice Age ended. Anthropologist Stanley J. Ulizek in his paper Human Dietary Change puts it best. When populations around the globe started turning to agriculture, regardless of their locations and type of crops, a similar trend occurred. The height and the health of people declined. Skeletal analysis suggests that these Neolithic peoples experienced greater physiological stress due to undernutrition and infectious disease. Another shocking change since switching to plants is that our brains are now 11% smaller than they were prior to agriculture. Meat provides crucial nutrients like vitamin B12, carnitine and choline, which are crucial for the development and functioning of the human brain. It also contains fats such as EPA and DHA, which are carbon-20 and 22 fatty acids. This type of fatty acid makes up 20% of our brain, and it's nearly impossible to get them from plants. Without enough animal fat, our brains lack the building blocks to grow and stay strong. So, over time, they shrink. I used to wonder why people would say to me in the comments, Max, you need a better haircut. But now, this all makes sense. Everyone's brains are smaller. I'm sure our smarter, meat-eating, carnivorous ancestors would have loved the slick mullet. As well as this brain size decrease, particularly in modern times we've seen the rate of almost every disease skyrocket. Humans have always been carnivores. When we ate meat, we thrived. 
when we switch the plants, our health declined. Dogs are natural carnivores. In 1980, when most people were still feeding their dogs meat, golden retrievers lived on average for 17 years. Today, after eating a modern diet of grain-based kibble, their lifespan has dropped to just 10 years. Some animals can safely eat plants, but only if they've evolved and developed biological traits that allow them to break down the plant's natural defense chemicals. But when we look at human biology, it's very clear we haven't developed these traits. Even today, we can't break down plant defense compounds. By not eating our species of appropriate diet, the health of humanity has suffered. In this video here, I break down exactly how our biology too shows that we humans are carnivores. <laughs>